brings you back with, um, well, just read that there, you know what it is. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Now, in this video, I thought I would make a preamp to amplify one of these and only use one transistor. So I have a little circuit here which um, you may have seen before which I'm going to repurpose. This is a little circuit that originally I made to connect a dynamic microphone up to my computer and it would give it a little bit of a boost. The thing is my computer's microphone input is just way too noisy to be of any use so that's why I'm going to repurpose this thing. So, this is the circuit at the moment. We want to change this into a microphone preamp that can be powered from an external 12 volt source. So what we need to do, well, let's draw in the resistor, which is how we're going to power this. Putting a resistor here, and that's going to go to our 12 volts. Now I've already found out that 2.2 mega ohms is a good resistor to bias the transistor. But we need to find out what resistor we need here. So what we want to do is powering the circuit off 12 volts. We want about 6 volts out here. So I've got my meter connected across the transistor, which is where this little cable goes. I've got the negative of the power supply connected to the transistor's emitter, which is the ground of the circuit. And here is the 10K resistor connected to the positive of the power supply and the other end going to the collector of the transistor. So first of all, let's just measure the voltage. I should have done this first. Power supply should be on 12 volts. Let's just make sure it is. So I just connect up my power supply and we got, yeah, 12.04 volts. Well, that's close enough. Alright, so I'll connect this back to the transistor, and my other meter lip is clipped off, so I'll just put that back on there. Uh... Alright, let's connect up our 10 kilo ohm resistor, and let's see what voltage we get across the transistor. Ah, that's not bad. 5.84 volts. It's kind of right where we need it. I just want to try that with the next value down in resistors, so... This is a 10K, I'm going to try with a 8.2K. See what voltage we get out of that. Well, my 10K makes a bid for freedom. And we're getting about 6.4 volts, so both of them are close enough. So I might just as well use this one. So with an 8.2K here, we got about, I think it was about 6.3 volts out. I'll just mark that in there, even though you can barely make up what I just said. So the way this thing works is the transistor and this resistor here form a voltage divider. And plus with this resistor here and this resistor here, that biases the transistor so it's about halfway on. And I found about 2.2 mega ohms biases it just about right. That also provides a little bit of negative feedback as well. But it's such a little amount of feedback that we will get a lot of gain. It's not going to bring the gain right down. So so if we take a small signal from a microphone, put it through this capacitor, so none of that DC gets into the microphone and throws it by itself. That small signal from the microphone is going to affect the current at the base of the transistor, which is going to affect how much this transistor conducts. So a small voltage swing here is going to give us a huge voltage swing here. I need to bias the microphone. So these electric condenser microphones, if you connect one of those directly up to an amplifier, it's not going to do anything because it needs voltage in order to work, which most amplifiers don't provide. So here's our microphone, and here's our ground, and these two wires are going to go up to the amplifier. So if we take a power source, let's just say a battery, a very badly drawn battery, and let's connect one end to the let's connect the negative to our ground and let's connect the positive to a resistor connect that up to our positive of our microphone that will now provide a signal 
Although we do need a capacitor between the amplifier and the microphone just to make sure any DC doesn't get into the amplifier, and there we go. So, we need to find out the value of this resistor when we're powering the microphone from 12 volts. Now, of course, it's probably going to change between microphone and microphone, but um, I'm going to find out the ideal resistance for this microphone, and we need to get it to a we need the voltage across this microphone to be about half of the supply voltage. So, I've got our microphone here, and let's just bring in my multimeter so we can get the voltage. I've got a potentiometer here connected up to our power supply, so that's connected up to the power supply's positive, and that's going to go to the hot lead of the microphone, I've got the power supply's negative, going to the negative of the power supply. So, let's connect that up. See what voltage we've got across the microphone. We've only got about 0.7 volts. So I'm going to turn this up. And get it to around half of the supply voltage, which will be in this case about 6 volts. Okay, there we go. Just about right. I'm just going to back that off of here. Try to get that just on 6 volts. Now all we need to do is measure whatever this is and we'll have our ideal resistance. So let's do that now. Connecting this up to my multimeter, making sure I'm not turning it at all. And our resistance is about 17 kilo ohms. Well, the nearest value I have is about 18 kilo ohms, so we'll use that. So, with all that in mind, we can continue drawing the circuit. So, we're going to take a 12 volts, and I'm actually going to put this through two resistors. I wish this bench wasn't so up and down, because it's making it very difficult to actually draw a straight line. I'm going to put one resistor here. And I'm going to make that go to a capacitor. With the other end connected to ground. I'll mark this as ground as well. Now all these grounds are the same ground, so this one and this one are essentially connected to each other. Now let's put in our microphone. So. Let's make those a bit narrower. There's our microphone. Draw a little capacitor in it, make sure to, so you know it's a capacitor or condenser or whatever you want to call it, microphone. So we've got a nice smooth, very smooth DC here. Let's make this resistor 100 ohms. I know that looks like 160 ohms, but that's 100 ohms. And this resistor, I mean capacitor, yeah, we'll make that 100 microfarads. And then we just need the resistor that connects this microphone and powers it up. Which I think we um, found out would be about 180k, or 18k rather. So, let's put that there. 18k, let's make that look like a one. And there we go. And that's the circuit almost completed. The only other thing I want to do to this is I just want to add a capacitor here. Again, for smoothing the voltage. This is becoming a right mess. Put a little plus there so that you can have the electrolytic capacitors. Let's make this one 470. Oh, and we also need another capacitor right here. Let's make that one microfarad. To keep any DC out of the amplifier. So, I've got to try and get all of that onto this little tiny board. I think I can do it, so when I've, when I've done all that, I will be back. I've done it. I've got all those parts on this little tiny board including the microphone. But you didn't think I'd get all those on there, did you? 
And I've got two wires coming out of the thing. This one is to power it. And this is the one that's going to go to the amplifier. Now you might be wondering why I'm using shielded cable as the power line. The thing is, due to the length of that cable, I don't want any electrical hum getting in. And shielded cable's going to help that, so... So anyway, it's not how this thing looks. It's how this thing sounds. So, let's power this thing up and see how well... Well, let's hear how well it works. Alright, so here we are, hearing from this little device. I did have to replace this um, capacitor here because I had to replace... Um, I had to change it to non-electrolytic because the original electrolytic capacitor was letting DC through and it was throwing the bias off and it wasn't making any sound at all. Anyway, it's just probably picking up a little bit of hum from my power supply from the transformer, so I'm just going to pick that up, move it away from the power supply. So, I'm talking in about one to two feet away from this thing. And it's actually um, powering the line input pretty well. The meters are actually peeking into the red and I've got all the levels set onto normal when I'm talking into this thing, so it's actually working pretty good. And let me just remind you that this thing only uses one transistor. There's just one transistor right there that's amplifying this microphone and that's, and that's doing a really good job of amplifying that up to line level. I don't have to do any extra amplification whatsoever. So, uh... What do you think about this, Jane? Well, Clement the Cool Dude, your microphone works really, really good. What about you, Teenage Ricky? It's crap. But it works. Yeah, but it's crap because you made it. What about you, ten-year-old Ricky? Oh, well, Clem, this thing's really cool. Psst. Oh, I got a bit overexcited and I wet myself. Um, what about you? What about you, Paul? <laughs> James? Yo! Oh. Jason? E. Jason's sister? Yeah. Oh, I don't think we're going to get any sense out of them. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can hear how good it sounds and stuff. And, uh, well, until next time, goodbye.